After doing some cow tipping, I was spotted and got chased down by a cattle rancher. He was on his horse though, and all I had was some Nikes, so it wasn't a fair race. But once I was able to get back to the car, I offered him some Mountain Dew, and that seemed to calm down his nerves, so all was good. Shouldn't be a surprise, because, as we all know, the best way to calm down an angry redneck is to give them some Mountain Dew. Or maybe I just shouldn't have, uh, tipped over his cows. Yeah, that probably would have been better. But the truth is, I tipped over his cows and you can't change the past, so it's time to settle down and move on and quite possibly order your Mantis sleep mask through the link down below and use promo code CHRISH at checkout to get 10% off of your order. I've had my Mantis sleep mask for two months, and I've been able to sleep much better since having mine. And I feel like you would too if you're looking for ways to help improve your sleep. And really quick, as if you enjoy this video, I have many more videos like this, as I'm on a journey to explore the entire country, and you can always keep up with my progress by checking out the interactive map that is linked below. The map shows you a visual on all of the places that I've made videos on so far. Last but not least, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. Well, everybody likes to quote the saying of, we're not in Kansas anymore, but this time, we are in Kansas, and there's no place like home, right? Well, the problem with saying that is that Kansas is home to only a select few. Whoa, uh, Kansas is home to way more than just a select few. There's 2.9 million people that call Kansas home. Yeah, and in most cases, 2.9 million is a huge number, but in this case, it's not as there are 329 million people in America. And at that rate, Kansas's population doesn't even make up 1% of the population of the entire country. Kansas is small, people. Kind of like my YouTube channel, but yes, Kansas is small. In terms of population, that is. And most of the 2.9 million people live in either the Wichita or Kansas City metro areas. In terms of size, Kansas definitely ain't small. In fact, it's the 15th largest state, and most of it looks like this. Slight, rolling hills, not that many trees, not that many towns, and not that many people. Very dry and windy, extremely cold winters due to the wind chill, and very hot and dusty summers. Severe storms in the spring could strike anywhere in the state while bringing possibly damaging tornadoes and golf ball sized hail, as it's in Tornado Alley. Yep, this is Kansas, and we started the video in Rooks County, which is home to only 5,000 people, or only 5 people per square mile of land. And the population is shrinking too, just like it is throughout the rest of the rural parts of Kansas, as nobody wants to live in these isolated rural areas of Kansas, or any of the other rural areas in the Great Plains, as there isn't much opportunity. But we're not in Rooks County anymore, as now we're in Graham County, which is home to even less people. Only 2,400 people live in Graham County, Kansas, which is a rate of only three people every square mile. If you live here, it's likely that your next door neighbor's house can be seen in the distance past some wheat fields. Maybe on the holidays, you can give them a hoot and holler across the fields and shout Merry Christmas and hope that they'll hear you. You better hope that works because cell phone service in these parts is non-existent. However, you might have a few neighbors right next door to you if you live in this town, but granted, not that many. This is Nicodemus, home to only 14 people these days. As many as 400 people were believed to have lived here in 1910, but it was never much more than that. There's hundreds of little towns in Kansas that dot the map that look just like Nicodemus. Many of them will have a small grid street layout just like Nicodemus. Many of these forgotten towns have only a fraction of their original buildings still standing, just like Nicodemus. But unlike Nicodemus, many of these small Kansas towns were built along a railroad, as this part of the country developed during the heyday of the railroad era. You'll almost always find a giant grain elevator in these towns as well, along with a water tower with the town's name on it. Nicodemus is different than all of the other small Kansas towns though, and I happened to pass through it while on my way to Colorado. 
Nicodemus was founded in 1877 and was named after the biblical character, and it was founded by newly freed slaves during the Great Migration after the Civil War. Nicodemus was the first black settlement west of the Mississippi River, and today it's the only of its kind from its era that still stands today. This town gave new life to the newly freed slaves as they were able to farm their own land. The first group of African Americans to head west through the Louisiana Purchase were called Sodbusters, named so after the sod that they used to build their houses. However, conditions throughout the Great Plains during the early 1870s were tough as the region faced a drought. See people? Droughts aren't just caused by greenhouse gases, sometimes they're natural, and the Great Plains has always seen a fairly dry climate. Weather conditions improved though later in the 1870s decade and people moved back out west. Most of the black settlers in Nicodemus were thought to have been from Lexington, Kentucky, interestingly enough. Since no railroad reached Nicodemus, it wasn't easy to get here. There wasn't even a main highway or a stagecoach route, as they were called back then, that reached the newly found settlement. In fact, once new settlers arrived to Nicodemus, they were unimpressed and didn't see a future for the town based off of its inconvenient location and the overall barren landscape. So Nicodemus never grew to have a population of more than just a couple hundred. Over time, the few that did make Nicodemus home were able to build this town from the ground up, starting with sod houses and then eventually replacing them with modern framed construction. During the peak years of Nicodemus, the town had a baseball team, two newspapers, and a post office. As time went on, Nicodemus helped elect the first black politicians in the state of Kansas, on not only a county level, but a state level. The community almost was able to get a railroad to run through town in the 1880s, and at one point, a railroad line was promised. However, they were never able to build a railroad line through Nicodemus, and at that point, the community lost hope upon realizing that a railroad was never going to come through. Continuous droughts over the years also contributed to Nicodemus's fall from grace, as the main industry was agriculture and, obviously, it's kind of difficult to grow crops with an overall dry climate. Nonetheless, Nicodemus is a great story for the American history book as it provided African Americans a new life after escaping slavery from Kentucky. Freed slaves were able to build a successful community, full of houses, businesses, and a post office among other town functions. But after 1910, people continued to move out and seek greener pastures, and the town continued to lose population. In 1976, Nicodemus was named a National Historic Landmark, and preservation of the remaining original buildings continues to be an ongoing task. But today, you can visit the Nicodemus Township Hall as it's the only building that's open to the public as of 2022. Inside, you can watch a video, view exhibits, and learn what black Americans were able to accomplish through building this community. You also have this building here, which is the Nicodemus Historical Society. We've passed by this baseball field a couple of times now to the right, and you can only assume that this is where the town's baseball team played. This is the First Baptist Church, which was established in 1878, while the first services were attended in a dugout. The building was constructed in 1907 and was a sign of the community growing past its first wave of immigrants. The church continued to offer services until the newer church that sits right next to it was built in 1970. 
The old church is not open to the public as it's considered to not be safe for people to go inside. Well, anyway, Nicodemus is still a town today, unincorporated, but a town nonetheless. Again, only 14 people live here, as of the most recent count. But the people that live here still live normal lives. This rest area along US 24 makes it a convenient place to park and stop off of the highway, and here you can find the historical markers that give you a brief rundown of what makes Nicodemus stand out from the rest of the small, rural Kansas towns. Nicodemus, Kansas, eh? So we're out here in the middle of Kansas, and the wind is blowing, as you can tell from my hair. The wind's always blowing out here in Kansas. We're along US Highway 24 at this rest area, which is actually what appears to be an extinct town, the town of Nicodemus, Nicodemus, Kansas. Sounds historic, and apparently it is. And I do end the video here. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the evil monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell and select yes so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video. If you enjoyed this video, then you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos with amazing insights on other places like what you saw here can be found in my USA Small Towns playlist or in my Kansas playlist. This is my first video in Kansas, so it might be a while before more videos are added to that list depending on when you find this video. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts and those links are below. We'll see you next time. Peace.